That lame rendition of the Indiana Jones theme could only mean one possible thing. It's Hydelide for NES. A game I've mentioned plenty of times in this series, but now it's finally time to look at it. As mentioned previously, Hydelide was an action RPG made for Japanese computers in 1984, two years before Zelda came out and really laid the ground for the action-adventure genre. The game was originally developed by a company called TESoft, short for Technology and Entertainment Software, which might be the most literal name for a video game developer ever. The project was headed by Tokohiro Natio, who took two games as inspiration, The Tower of Jiraga and The Black Onyx. The Black Onyx was a dungeon crawling RPG just for the unaware. With the Black Onyx connections being the RPG elements, but of course taking the gameplay of Jiraga and turning the arcade game into more of an open world RPG. When Hydelide was released, it got a huge amount of praise and sold quite well. The Famicom release itself alone sold around 1 million units. But in the West is a different story. The NES release of Hydelide is considered one of the worst games for the system, a complete disgrace to the action RPG genre. But why is this? Well, let's put this into perspective. The Legend of Zelda came out February of 1986 and got a US release in July of 1987. Hydelite came out on the Famicom in March of 1986 and didn't get released until July of 1989, three years after it debuted and two years after Zelda's US release. Hydelite was sadly an old relic that should have never been released here. It was too late for its own good. But does that mean it's entirely bad? No. Hydelite isn't the worst thing in the world. If you look at it with a knowledge of its history and what it laid the foundation of, and not think of it as a game from 1989, I think it can be... a little enjoyable. In the Kingdom of Fairyland, three magical jewels are used to keep the evil Varalis at bay. Unfortunately, some guy steals one of them, and when the three are not conjoined, they lose their powers freeing Varalis, with the other two getting stolen as well somewhere in there. Varalis then transforms the Princess Anne into three fairies, because it's fairyland, I guess, so why not, and hid them somewhere among the land. So it's up to you to save fairyland and Princess Anne, as the heroic, courageous, dashing, Jim. Jim the Knight. Hey, what's up, it's Jim. And so, you're up- uh, Hey! Can I start the game without getting attacked? Anyways, and so you're off to explore the world. And to be honest, this is a positive I have to give right off the bat. For a Famicom game at this point in time, making an open world adventure game was probably a little risky, since Nintendo had to use the Famicom disc system just to make Zelda's world. But here you have an entire world to explore just in a cartridge. But now let's get into the gameplay itself. If you want to debate if Zelda is one or not, then Highlight is definitely the first RPG for the Famicom, because Jim definitely needs to level up through experience. Because the idea of action-based combat wasn't really thought of at the time, Highlight uses a defense slash attack stance just by holding down the A button. You're automatically in defense mode at all time until you hold down A, then you can run into enemies to defeat them. A little archaic, but understandable. But what's not understandable is how long this takes just to level up. When all you can fight right now are slimes and coal boats, you only gain a little bit of experience. So let's just say the first part of this game gets a little tedious. And since the battles are on the automatic side, you'll never know when something goes wrong and it's game over. So after taking all that damage, how do you heal? Easy. Just find a grassy field and stand completely still, and your life will go up automatically. Up pretty good addition, but you have to take the good with the bad, because it takes its sweet time just to fill back up again. It only gets worse when you have a longer life bar after leveling up. Make sure you stay in a field, because anywhere else isn't comfortable for picky Jim here, and sometimes he may even lose health. I don't get it. So basically the whole game is grinding and then waiting for your life to restore so you can grind some more. Hearing that just makes the game sound super tedious and you'd be right. Hide Light definitely fits the bill of early RPG grind fest, which may turn off most of you. While I'm not super against grinding, what I am against is this game's weak point mechanic. Enemies move in four directions and if you attack them where they're not facing in front of you, you can deal damage without taking it. 
This is good for certain enemies, but then there are some enemies they decide to be lazy about and tell you to figure out what direction they're facing on your own. Like these vicious worms. They kill you in one hit if you're not ready or leveled up enough. Dying is just super tedious because you have to do it all the goddamn time. Thankfully, Highlight does have a save option to continue immediately to get back into the game, but do they have to make it so tedious? You start in a brand new game, so you go into the menu to choose Load, then you press Yes, and you're back where you last saved. Maybe it doesn't sound so bad, but play this for like an hour and then you'll be sick of it. I should mention that the Famicom version in Japan was called Highlight Special. Special in the fact you gain magic abilities as you level up, which was introduced in Highlight 2. It's really underutilized and you can completely forget you even have it. Maybe it would be a lot better if the game used the magic attack with, say, the select button, but I think the programmers desperately needed two pause screens, one for bringing up the menu and one that's a simple pause screen. So in this game, they made the magic attack A and B. Wonderful. Man, this review's been pretty negative, even though I said the game's not that bad. Well, in all honesty, it is bad. I just don't think the game deserves the reputation it gotten. It's only bad because it's an outdated mess on both action-adventure games and RPGs. But I won't lie, I do like the combat system, and I think it works in the B4 button commands era. I just hate how this game is mostly grinding just to pet out the game. I was told that the E series took this system and improved on it, and is generally loved, so I'll have to check out that series sometime. The game was brought over to the states by FCI. If you don't remember them, check out my Lunar Pool video to get a refresher. They definitely should have made some adjustments before bringing the game over, making it more comfortable to play in 1989. I was planning on beating this game for the review, but I accidentally saved instead of loaded. So my save was completely gone. So fuck it, I played enough to get a general idea. So bottom line, Hydlide, no it's not good, but there are much worse games on the NES. So if you have played Hydlide and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.